Well, hey, y'all. This is your friend Zeke again. How you like this hat, huh? You know what it's made out of? A coyote. Yeah, look at the tail here. Ooh. Might wonder why I'm all dressed up here. I'm telling you what, it is cold. It is cold. But I'm going to be on a journey with Lewis and Clark. Now, who is these Lewis and Clark best? Lewis and Clark is going to be two men that are going to be walking all the way through that Louisiana territory that we just got done talking about that President Jefferson had acquired from the French. Yes, he did. Jefferson had an idea. He thought if we could get somebody out there to find out what it was like in that their territory, more people wouldn't be afraid to go out there. But we need to find out what we bought first. When you buy something, you need to find out what it's all about, right? And that's exactly what he wanted to do. Now, you can tell. It's a wee bit windy out here, and it's a little bit cold. But we got to be prepared for the job. I'm ready. Are you? All right. Let's get into it. This land was so unknown that Jefferson would have to pick the right people to go. And the first one that he picked was a man named Meriwether Lewis. Meriwether Lewis? Well, who was he? Meriwether Lewis was a private secretary and a close friend of Thomas Jefferson. He really was. He didn't have the best reputation, though. He wasn't married. Um, he had a few things that could be worked on a little at a time. And one thing was this. He drank a little bit. Well, sometimes he drank a lot. Okay. And when he did, he got his temper up. Before you know it, he was in fights and he would be thrown in jail. And nobody wants to be like that. But Jefferson looked all past that because of his upbringing. His upbringing of Meriwether Lewis, when he grew up, he grew up in Kentucky, different areas there, and Virginia, and his mother was a herbologist. What in the world is that kind of a name? It means that she finds remedies and potions and medicines from plants like this here. And he knew all about surviving in them their woods. And he also knew how to make motion, uh, potions and medicines out of things that we would, would just walk right past. He knew he'd be a survivalist. And he saw the goodness in him and not the badness. Now, wouldn't that be something if we could all just do that? Sometimes we look at people and all we see is the bad things. But there's a lot of good in people. Yes, there is. There is a lot of good. So we need to start looking at the good things and not the bad things. And Jefferson saw this in him, that he was an upright man and that he was the man for the job. And so he was the first one he picked. He also was an army man. Oh, yes, he was. He was an army man. And along the way, that army man had met this other man. His name was William Clark. William Clark was also in the army, but he was raised a little bit different. When he was raised way out into the wilderness, he didn't have a mother, but his older brother kind of taught him how to read. And he became an engineer. An engineer. Now, being an engineer, he could build things. He could make things. He was a lot calmer of a person. A lot calm. Now, he had a famous older brother, George Rogers Clark. One that fought against the British in the Revolutionary War. Way out west. In that far place called... Ohio, Ohio, yes. So his brother was a hero. And little did he know his little brother was going to be a big hero too. Known for a long, long time till today. So these two men complimented each other. When Meriwether Lewis would get all shook up and just out of sorts, Clark calmed him down, calmed him down. And these men kept journals on the way out there. And they wrote down all kinds of fancy things. But let's let's go back to the beginning. All right. This was the very first project, scientific project, that would actually be funded by the federal government. 
Jefferson asked for some money for this. Now, we just spent $15 million on this here territory. You got to have a little bit of money to find out what it's all about. So they gave them $2,500. hundred, not thousands. $2,500 for supplies. How many men are going to go? Just these two? Oh, no. Oh, no. 33 men will go out there and they will make it back. Well, a few of them didn't make it back, but they all usually make it back. Now, here was the things that they needed to find. So pay close attention to this. First of all, Jefferson had everything written down. I told you he was OAD. What do they call it? He was, he was very particular. OAD, AOD, um, um, I forget what they call it. There's a fancy word for it. OCD. That's what they call it. OCD. He was. But good thing he was. He was told, first of all, tell them boys, you got to find a source of the Missouri River. The source, because it feeds into the Mississippi. If you find the source of the Missouri River, I don't know why. But he just wanted to know. Second was, find a usable route through the Rocky Mountains. Because the Rocky Mountains are here, we want to get past that. So you got to find a usable route to get through. Because we want to go all the way to the Pacific Ocean. We've never been to the Pacific Ocean. And who knows what's over there? And who knows who's over there? Could be the Russians are over there. We don't know. Third thing, they wanted to observe all the customs of the Native Americans that are out there. And there's lots of different ones. So this might not just be for getting my dinner. I got to protect myself while I'm out there. I hope I don't ever have to, but you might have to. So President Jefferson really liked the idea of Native American culture. Very honorable. Very very much. But he wanted to know more about it. And he had decorated his house. Monticello with uh, Indian things. Indian artifacts. But only of the woodland Indians. That were around this area. What's it like out there. When you have the plain Indians. They live on the plains. They're a whole different bunch of people out there. Yes they are. Just because you call somebody Indians. Doesn't mean they're all the same. Some of them don't even like each other, but they are different type of people. Yes, they are. So he wanted to know all about them, good and bad, good and bad. And the fourth thing was, probably one of the most important things, take samples of all the plant and animal life that you see, plant and animal life, and also the land features Mountains, streams, rivers, deserts, plains. Also, make very good maps on the way out there. Draw your maps. What did they use? Sextons and octons. You can see they went by the stars. Went by the stars. And they drew out their maps. So when the other fellows were sleeping, there's old Lewis and Clark. They're following the stars and knowing exactly where they're going. Well, they think they know where they're going. It just was, how do we get there? There's a lot of obstacles in a way. So we're going to look at a few things that they found. I don't have everything, but we're going to look at a few things. All right. So they start out January 18th, 1803. President Jefferson gets $2,500. And... By the spring of 1804, Lewis and Clark set out. They do. They set out. Now, they, they've got some of their material that they need. And they have a lot of men on their team. And the men on their team all had to be able to do something. It just wasn't just, do you want to go on a trip? Are you going on vacation? Every one of those men had to be somebody to do something. Whether you were making tents, you were making clothes, you were chopping down wood, you were a doctor, you were an artist, you were a musician. What do you mean, musician? 
well, you got to have some fun while you're sitting around the fire, don't you? It gets the men's morale up. It sure does. We like to hear music. We have to have people that can do things. And every one of those men, even ones that made clothes, tailors, they had to be able to make moccasins. They had to be able to make clothes out of animal skins because some of these things, they wear out. The boots I have, I'll be lucky if they last me six weeks. So everybody had a job to do. There was 33 men and one dog. One dog? Did you ever hear of a Newfoundland dog? It's a big dog. It looks like a bear, right? His name was Seaman. And here's how he got it. Meriwether Lewis was at a trading post, saw this dog. So he bought the dog, $20. It was $20. That's a lot of money. Why would you need a dog? Dog comes in handy later on. I'm going to tell you later on what happens. Now, there was an Indian scout there, and he says, I'll buy that dog off you. And I think he had three or four beaver pelts. They are expensive, folks. Those beaver pelts are expensive, way more than $20. You know what old Meriwether said? No. This dog's coming with us. And the dog made it all the way out there and would make it all the way back. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. That dog saved their lives a few times. I'll tell you about it in a minute. But let's continue on. Now, they call this here expedition. Pay attention to this. The core of discovery. The core of discovery. It wasn't just called Lewis and Clark's expedition. There's old Glory wanting to wrap her arms around me again. It was called the core of discovery. That's what it was called. As they went out there, and they got they left St. Louis. They left St. Louis spring of 1804. So just about this time, it was cold. Ooh, it's cold right now. Went by boat on the Missouri River as far as they could go. Along the way, they drew pictures of birds, of animals, of plants. They took some plants, they put them inside of, of books to flatten them. They packaged things up, and every so often, they would send men back the whole big package of stuff. Jefferson was getting excited now because there was animals that he had never seen before. There were plants and things that he had never seen before, we would never seen before. They came across these little animals out in the prairie. And they started barking. Burp, 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 burp. Before you know it, there was two or three or four or five, and they were all barking. Burp, 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 burp. They called them barking squirrels. They didn't have much little ears. And they sat up like this, and they all started barking. Well, what they were doing was they were warning everybody else, all their other little barking squirrels, that there was men out there that could actually hurt them. So it was time to go down the hole. What these little barking squirrels were called? Prairie dogs. They were called prairie dogs. We still have prairie dogs, right? They sent a couple of them there, prairie dogs, back alive, alive now. Mr. Jefferson. He'd never seen him before. They also sent some squirrels back, different kinds of squirrels that we don't have here, alive. And I heard that a couple of them got loose in the White House. Yes, they did. And never did find them. They're out there someplace. They also sent back a couple of live bears. Bears. Remember what I told you? That they had some bears on the White House grounds and cages? Yes, they did. Now, they sent back a lot of things that were just skins. Uh, they couldn't send things back that were just dead. And that was it because they'd stink too, too much. It would take too long to get back. But they drew a lot of pictures. And they did send back animals that were gutted. And there was just skins left up. So we could see what they looked like. They also sent back some big, big bones. Big bones. Guess what? They were dinosaur bones. And Jefferson had those bones even before from around here. He found some bones. He said, if you find any bones there like that out there, you send them back. And if you find any of the animals, 
that are that big, you try to send them back. Now, how are you going to send a dinosaur back? Why would they think that dinosaurs would be out there? They had no idea now. They had no idea that there might be dinosaurs out there. He called them mastodons because that word dinosaur here now didn't even come into being a word until the 1840s. Almost 30 some years later. Did they find any dinosaurs out there? No, they did. No, they didn't find any dinosaurs out there. Did find some bones though. Did find some bones. But no dinosaurs. They're gone. They're gone. Okay. So, here's the things that they just sent back. Besides squirrels, besides the prairie dogs, they sent back a stuffed antelope, a stuffed weasel. They sent back the horns of a mountain goat, some elk horns, some buffalo skins, and a lot of Indian artifacts. Would you like to see some Indian artifacts? I have some here. I'm going to show them to you. Let me put my hair rifle down. I'm going to show you some Indian artifacts here. Whew, I think it's getting so cold. It's almost starting to snow out here. All right, let me show you a couple of these artifacts here that we captured. Do you understand what these are? Let me get real close so you can see. These are deer toes. Deer toes, folks. Okay? Deer toes. They'd put them around their ankles, and they would dance with them. Make some noise, don't they? I want to show you two different types of arrows. Now, this arrow, if you see the tip here, this is made by a woodland, a woodland Indian, and you can tell that the feathers here, there's only two. Look at that there. Goose feathers. Goose feathers now, okay? The way it's painted up, you can tell it's a woodland arrow from a woodland Indian. Now, when they got out there, they found arrows from a plains Indian. Look at the difference on the tip on this one. Oh, that's going to hurt. That's going to leave a mark right there. And then look at the feathers. All right, feathers from a different type of bird. Not a goose. No, not a goose. All right, a little bit thicker. This arrow is going to hurt somebody. It can go through a buffalo. Oh, yes, it can. You can hit a buffalo. Put it down. A couple of them. So that's the difference between the... Uh, the arrows between the Indians that live in here run on the northern, on the eastern side of US of A and the ones out west. Also, some Western culture out there. You ever been in places like Arizona, New Mexico? This is a gourd. See, just like a gourd I would grow. And they use it in the ceremonies. So, don't you love the way it's all painted up there? I just love it. I just love the way it looks. And there's something else I'll show you. Got the same type of markings on it. I can lift it up there. Scary. Uh, what do you think this is? This is the jaw from a buffalo. You see the teeth there? Pretty big. It goes right here. They use this in ceremonies, okay, but also as a weapon. You could really hurt somebody with this. So they use it as a weapon. It's getting pretty bad out here, isn't it, folks? It is. But I got a couple more things I got to show you before I do anything else. Y'all know what this is? Well, let me take this guard off it. We call this a tomahawk. We just call it a tomahawk. Now, the French were the first ones to trade with the Indians metal and they would trade with metal instead of using stone they use these this is sharp oh yeah now it wasn't just for killing people okay it's a tool it's a tool for cutting things wood whatever you need to cut so don't just think every time you see this it's got to be a weapon to hurt somebody it could anything could be a weapon you know that i told you that all before that anything can be used as a weapon so we don't want to just say everything's meant to kill I will show you one that Lewis and Clark carried, and it's this. Look at the size of this here one. This is an original type one that they actually carried. It has Lewis and Clark on there. You understand it right there? And you see the date? 
1805. 1805, okay? That's when he came home. They call this a hawk. Not a tomahawk. A hawk. Why do you think they call it a hawk? Take a good look at that. You see? You see? In a shape like a hawk's beak? Yes, it is. I hope there's no hawks around here. But there is. It's just called a hawk because it's shaped like a tomahawk. Now, one of the most important things that we got was this. Keep it in a special case. So it never gets ruined. This is called a talking stick. Yeah. Now, when somebody's talking and they're Indian tribes, they get to hold this stick. They get to hold this stick. Now, there's many different ones that they have in different tribes. But if you're talking, if you're talking, you get to hold the stick. Maybe I should use this in the classroom. But there's a penalty if you're talking when somebody else is holding the stick. What do you think it is? They send you out in the hallway? Death. It's death. You never talk when somebody else is talking. You could end up dead. That's pretty powerful stuff right there. But we're not going to do that to y'all. No. Maybe we should bring a talking stick back just a little bit, though. Might be a good idea, don't you think? So that's a few things that I wanted to show you. There's lots of plants, lots of animals, lots of things they came across. They put down in their books of theirs, and they were their journals. We still have some of them journals. Yes, we do. We do have some of them. Now, along the way, after we get done with that, Along the way, they meet this here person named Sakajawea. Sakagawea. Who's Sakagawea? She's a Shoshone. She's a Shoshone. Okay. She lived in the Rocky Mountains. And she had been kidnapped by the Hidatsa tribe when she was about 11 years old. So she grew up as... Hidatsa, but she's really Shoshone. Anyways, they asked her if she knew the route. Oh, she knew the route, all right. She'd been there before. So let me tell you just a little bit about her. Papers got all messed up here because they flew across the ways. Don't know what happened to it. The Kagawea was roughly about 16 years old when she was married to a French trader named Charbonnet. She was a second wife of Charbonnet. She went along with Lewis and Clark and the rest of the boys as their guide and as an interpreter because she could speak a couple different languages of the Indians. That was okay. It was cold. It was in the wintertime. Charbonnet didn't want to go. He had other things to do. He said, go ahead and go. She was six months pregnant. That's right. She was going to have a little baby. But she went anyway. On the way, she had that baby. The guys just called him baby Pumpy. They called him Pumpy. But his name was Jean Baptiste. Jean Baptiste. Okay. So um, she went with them. She had the baby. They made it all the way to the West Coast. And once they got there, they decided, now what are we going to do now? Are we going to stay the winter here? Are we going to go back? They let them all vote. They voted. Now, this is one of the first times they ever let a woman vote. And there was somebody else there that was very particular, too. His name was York. And York was William Clark's slave. Meaning a slave went with them? Yes, he did. And he did everything that everybody else did. He was still a slave. Now, one thing about York, he became very popular. Kind of like a big celebrity to the Indians. They'd never seen a black man before. 
No, they hadn't. For one thing, he was way darker than they were. And, you know, in Indian rituals and in Indian customs, sometimes they paint themselves up for different occasions. Blue, red, whatever color, white. And they just figured that this man here had been painting himself up for some special occasion. And so they tried to rub it off. And York said, it's not coming off. It's not paint. They couldn't get past it. They thought he was way beyond what they were, like a god. And his hair felt like a buffalo skin. The hair on the buffalo. Later on, they would call those soldiers buffalo soldiers because of the hair on the African-Americans' heads. He became a celebrity, so they would send him with a few men ahead of them into an Indian village. And all these people had already heard that York was coming. York, 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 York. It was a lot easier way to get into the Indian village than just come up there with them their guns. So he played a very vital role. Yes, he did. And they let him vote as much as they did Sacagawea. And they voted to go back. So in the spring of 1806, they would head back. It took them all that time to get out there. It took them all that time. Lewis takes the northern route, and Clark takes a southern route. Well, they meet in St. Louis anyway, and in September 23rd of 1806, they both meet in, in St. Louis. Yes, they did. Two years four months, 8,000 miles, and all them artifacts they had sent back. Wow. Now, what a journey. There was only one man that died, and he died of his appendix exploding. And there was a couple of men that were sent back because they tried to escape. Can I just go home if I want to go home? This is a military expedition. If you leave, and you can be court-martialed. So they sent them back, two men. They sent them back, and they were court-martialed. So out of all those men, three of them never made a whole trip. The rest of them did. Now, they were attacked by Indians a couple times. They were welcomed in a couple times. And at one time, Sakagawea, as they went into a Shoshone village, very scary. They needed horses real bad. She looked at the chief. Chief looked at her. Before you know it, they start hugging. Here it was her long lost brother, Hathaway. He hadn't seen her since she was 11 years old. And because of the reunion together, the team got the horses, they got the supplies they needed. Everything was good. It could have turned out tragic if it wasn't for her. So her being there was very, very important. Sure was. What an extraordinary voyage they had. There was one time where the Indians didn't take too kindly to them. And they chased them all the way down to the boats. There was a standoff. The men at the boats, everybody had their guns ready. The Indians on top of the ridge had their arrows ready. Everybody got called. The team just floated away. Good thing they could have all been killed that day. Sioux Indians, I believe. They don't take too kindly to anybody coming in their territory. There were other Indians that helped them to build boats. Right out of the trees. They cut them and notched them right out. There was one time when the boys were camping. And a herd of buffalo started marching down through the camp. It was the dog, semen, that woke him up just before some of these men were trampled. The dog woke him up and scared some of the buffalo to go the other way. Another time, a bear come through and were chasing these boys. And they all ran into the river. Can a bear swim? Yes, it can. Yes, it can. A couple of boys went up a tree. Can a bear climb a tree? Oh, yes, it can. Or it can knock you right out of a tree. That dog saved their lives again. Now, Meriwether Lewis took that there gun and shot at it. Missed. Only had one shot. And he ran up a tree. 
And that dog chased that bear around so much the bear got tired of him and just went away. Saved his life. Saved his life. Now, there was one time it was a tragic thing, and I'll let it go with this. There's lots of stories to share, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you something later on. I want you to watch this about Lewis Clark. Mary Mother Lewis was shot by one of his own men, one-eyed Pierre. Guess where he was shot? In the buttocks, right in the back end. Yes, he was. Maybe because old Pierre only had one eye, I don't know, but accidentally shot him right in the back end. He survived. <laughs> and so did Pierre. He survived too. <laughs> well, let's find out what happened to these people towards the end because I know this is getting long and I know you're getting tired. So let me tell you, we'll go on, okay? Meriwether Lewis, he became governor of Louisiana Territory. All that territory. But, you know, he did have a drinking problem and he did have a depression problem. So he got depressed a lot. On October 11th, 1809, in his room of the hotel he was staying at, he died of a gunshot wound to the head. Most people think it was suicide. Some people think that somebody shot him. Maybe for a gambling debt? Maybe something. I don't know. I don't know to this day. And I don't think anybody else knows because most of them people are long gone by now. That ended his life. He wasn't that old. How about William Clark? Well, he became a public official in St. Louis. He married and he had two children of his own. Now, he adopted Sacagawea's son, Jean Baptiste. And Jean Baptiste was educated in Europe. And guess what he did? He worked as a guide for people to go out west in that Louisiana territory that his stepdaddy now, William Clark, did. William Clark. Took another whole trip out there in 1807. He went out there again. He also adopted Sacagawea's daughter, Lizzie, in August 11th, of 1813. So both of her kids. Don't know if she had any more. Supposedly, she died. But there have been rumors that she lived on to be a very old woman. Yes. We don't know. We don't know if she actually died or she lived on. Why would she give up her children so they could be educated in the white man's way? That's why she figured they had a better choice and a better life to go that way. Now, what about old York? Not until 1832 did Clark finally release him. Why didn't he just let him go? All that he went through. He said, because you're my slave. So he kept them until 1832. Wow. But he did release them, finally. Chicago Wea, William Clark, Meriwether Lewis, York, all these different men and women, one woman, they had a fantastic journey they went through, didn't they? Yes, they did. But they weren't the only ones that would make that journey. There'd be somebody else named Zebulon Pike. Zebulon Pike would take a southern route to a place that we call Colorado today. And he explored the upper Mississippi River. In 1806 and 1807, he explored this Colorado region. And he sighted a large mountain. Guess what he called it? Pike's Peak. Pike's Peak. It's still there today. It's still there today. What about President Jefferson? Well, in 1804, he easily won re-election, folks. I mean, come on, he doubled the size of the U.S. of A. All that exploration that went on out there it was just unbelievable. George Clinton from New York replaced Aaron Burr as vice president. He replaced Aaron Burr as vice president. So you have President Thomas Jefferson, Vice President George Clinton. And that's about as far as we can go today. Because when we get back, we're going to talk about a few other things that might be a little tragic to understand. But that's okay. I want you to be safe. I want you to have fun learning. And I want you to respect somebody today. Tell them that you love them today. Because you never know what's right around the corner, do you? All right. It's been good teaching you. It's been good talking with you. See you soon.